Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We now have the schedules for the panels at CitizenCon and some details of what will be shown in them. The event hall is labelled as Checkpoint Station and the entrance Ruin Entrance, so assumedly this is all Pyro Station themed. There is a ton of community booths, a life-sized dragonfly, a merch store and social areas. Throughout the live stream, I suspect that Cloud Imperium will be moving around the show floor and interviewing people, chatting to people, and looking at what is available for the actual physical event so remote viewers don't miss out. I want to mention that on the venue map, there is a large section of the showroom floor that is marked as to be announced, and it looks like it's a hangar. So this could be a cool prop, a showcase of something like a new ship. It could be an experimental mode that people can play. It could be a place where there's loads of models of ships because they've done ice sculptures and they've obviously 3D built models and stuff like that before, massive ones. There's also a massive stage where they will be hosting the panels and presentations. What panels, you ask? Well, let's jump into the CitizenCon event schedule. Day one, because it's a two-day event, on the 21st of October at 4pm UTC, the venue opens. I'm expecting the official live stream to start probably at 5pm UTC, an hour after that, so they can look around and hype stuff up and that sort of stuff. 6pm UTC, Shaping the Verse is our first panel presentation, the future of Star Engine. From Pixel to Persistent Universe and everything in between, join us as we showcase the power and depth of the star engine enabling the seamless scale that pushes our games to the cutting edge of industry technology and beyond so the star engine is the engine that they've effectively named what they've built star citizen out of it's an evolved cry engine then lumberyard engine now very much its own thing it's been built up for the last decade and is used for star citizen's persistent universe and squadron 42 as there was no appropriate engine for star citizen just to use out of the bag they have had to really take the engine in their own way for what they wanted for the game. There is an absolutely huge amount of stuff that could fit under the Shaping the Verse, the Future of Star Engine category, but yeah, I'm expecting them to show off a load of Squadron 42 stuff, a load of Star Citizen stuff, a load of pretty stuff. I'm also expecting Chris to be wheeled out for either the start of that presentation or um, to actually be giving it. Something else to mention, I'm not sure if any of these are pre-recorded, they might have some pre-recorded elements too, and the future of the Star Engine could potentially have a sort of gameplay demo nature to it. The next panel is an hour and a half later, 7.30pm UTC, so that might be an indication that the future of the Star Engine one's an hour long, we don't really know, I'm expecting like half an hour-ish gaps in between panels, um, although we'll sort of have to wait and see. So this presentation, fix it, fly it, want to get a look at resource management in action, here we showcase an exciting upcoming gameplay role that shakes up the vehicle experience, continues our journey towards multi-crew gameplay, and affects all life in the verse as we know it. So, assumedly, this is going to be engineering gameplay for the resource management system that they're working on, so a mixture of physical components, fire and fire propagation, the circuitry of ships, damage control, all of that sort of coming together with the engineer running around fixing components, maintaining them, putting out fires. The life support systems also feed into this system. The resource management system is monumentally important to Star Citizen as it allows for true multi-crew gameplay and reasons to have lots of crew members, especially on larger ships. At 8.30 p.m., so an hour later, we've got the cosplay competition. An hour and a half after that, at 10 p.m. UTC, we've got Talking Ship 2953, presenting this year's newly released vehicles, with a focus on how lore of the past is shaping vehicles of the future, as well as look at the pipeline itself and the new methodologies within. Expect to see some new ships, talked about and released here potentially. A few little spoilers now, so um, close your ear holes and um, I'll put, get Zin to put up a spoilers warning on the screen until it's over. We've got things like the Zeus Mark II, um, which has been rumoured. The Zeus is the first RSI ship in law to have a quantum drive. It does sound like they're talking about that there, but we also have things like the Cutter, Scout and Expedition, and we know that the Cloud have been working on a load of other ships as well. It might be the first time we've seen some other concepts for ships as well. Typically these panels are pretty good because they'll go, look at how far we are with the Polaris or something like that, and some other sort of um, ships, like maybe they'll show where they got to with the Banu Merchantman before they moved on to the RSI 
ships. So expect some new flyable ships, some concept ships, and some updates on ships that you are, might be excited about. 11 p.m. UTC, navigating the universe. Travel with us to the forefront of navigation with a look at the evolution of UI features that help players view, engage, and interact with their surroundings, offering exciting new perspectives on the Star Citizen universe. I am hoping they show off updates to Star Map, um, updates to the Moby Glass, maps, mini-maps, all that sort of jazz. We know that there's going to be some cool interaction with um, scanning objects and running around and getting more information about objects um, in FPS sort of perspective as well. A lot of these systems are for primarily Squadron 42, but obviously the Persistent Universe and Star Citizen in general as well, but they've been built for sort of the squadron experience. And this is going to lead into um, looting, investigation, completing missions in various ways, and generally allowing you to navigate the verse better. But yeah, very much looking forward to that. Three hours after that, the venue closes and people are speculating there might be something else between that last panel for the day and the venue closing. It might be it's not on the actual stage though, that it's just actually um, on the show floor. There is that to be announced area. We also know throughout the day there's going to be that fight or flight tournament 2v2 going on and lots of other bits and bobs to see. Day 2, 22nd of October. The venue opens at 4pm UTC, but the first panel starts at 6pm UTC with character advancement. We explore the outlaw styles found on the far frontier, the new technologies enabling our next generation of character customization, and much anticipated arrival of diverse coiffure. That means hair. They're talking about hairstyles and beards and that sort of stuff. So yeah, expect them to have updated animations and much better looking models for players and faces and NPCs, finally allowing for much more diverse hairstyles. Then referring it to next generation character customization would suggest to me that there has been a big update there. So maybe UI and everything else there has improved to actually catapult it into a proper character customization experience. 7 p.m. UTC, life in the first person. Get an up close and personal look at upcoming major improvements to first person gameplay, diversified combat AI behavior, overhauled weapon handling, and how we're shaping a more immersive dynamic universe through seamless and tactile interactions. This just sounds like it's looking at how the player experience in first person has been improved over various updates that we might not have actually seen yet ourselves. I'm hoping we see some vandal combat, but I like the term tactile interaction because I want to be able to be running around the verse and um, interacting with things and I want to feel like the universe is living and breathing with NPCs doing the same. 8pm UTC, taking flight. We launch into the next iteration of Star Citizen's flight experience and explore impending improvements for every aspect of space and atmospheric travel, combat and interaction. So this sounds to me like it's going to be a mixture of master modes and how all the systems feed into each other for the resource management system, all the sort of improvements they've got planned for um, ship flight and combat, all of that coming together. At 10 p.m. UTC, we've got Living on the Edge. We delve into the living condition and environments of outlaws and settlers trying to carve out an existence beyond the safety of the UEE, megacorporations and other confines of 30th century society. I'm expecting a sort of look at some of the Pyro stations, maybe even a look at Nyx. You're going to have various factions in Pyro, they might look at some of them, but we do know there's been a lot of work into um, various stations of Pyro, the Pyro planets, the factions at Pyro, Ruin Station, tons of settlements around Stanton and Pyro as well. Cloud and Pyro have been building loads of these really interesting points of interest which are coming out to the game at some point in the near future. Expect to see some of that here. 11pm UTC. Destination adventure from high up in orbit down to the surface of our planets and deep into the underground. We delve into new interactions, missions and gameplay and more coming to Star Citizen's universe on all levels. This sounds like it might be a gameplay demo showing off features that are near future but sort of combining them all into some form of uh, mission or experience. At 11.45pm UTC, which I expect is directly 
after the destination adventure panel um, or, or presentation um, there's the closing ceremony and I am expecting at some point between those two um, or as part of those two Chris to be talking about the future of Star Citizen and any pillars and um, major milestones they're hitting or planning to hit and uh, the sort of future of the game over the next year might be some major announcements as well some people are expecting a Squadron 42 release date to be talked about or something major to do with that a lot of people are expecting Alpha 3.21 to go live at CitizenCon. I do think that's very likely. There's certainly a load of other stuff they could show at CitizenCon or at least talk about or allude to. Boom! That's your Star Citizen, CitizenCon panels and presentations schedule for the 21st and 22nd of October. I am super excited for CitizenCon. I'm really interested to know what of those panels you are excited to see. What do you think they're going to be showing at CitizenCon? What ships do you think are going to be unveiled? Do you think we're going to hear a Squadron 42 Episode 1 release date? Are you attending CitizenCon in person? Do you think we're missing something from CitizenCon? Like, um, do you think there should have been a very specific Squadron 42 panel? Some of these panels are actually quite vague, but could contain things like that. Was there something that you were hoping to hear or see, but it doesn't look like they are going to do that? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What the hell are you? It's NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer, enabling you to minimize your presence on the internet, almost like a cloaking device. It also allows you to hunt out the best TV and movies and shopping deals by changing your region. It prevents big internet from gathering and using your personal data. There's even a data breach scanner and mesh net for your own remote private network included. When Zinn asked, what's the Predator movie got to do with NordVPN or CitizenCon or Star Citizen? I said, what's any of our NordVPN ads got to do with anything? Grab yourself NordVPN in the links below for a seamless, secure internet experience. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. For October 2023, we are giving away a Constellation Phoenix. This luxury multi-crew ship can be used as a mission runner, an explorer, a base of operations, and more. It comes with a luxury P-72 Archimedes snub, as well as the Lynx rover, allowing you to have on and off planet excursions. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. This is the bit of the video where I appeal to you to try and join the channel memberships and give us money. We have a load of you that are Patreons or have become YouTube channel members with the join button under my videos. And that goes a huge way in helping the channel and enabling us to make daily Star Citizen news entertainment. But there are a load of other ways to help us. Liking, commenting, sharing these videos. That helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching to the end. Please get involved in the comment section and I hope you have a great October.